All right, in this video, we're going to look at another uh, problem involving gravity and vertical motion. So here we've got a penny, and it's thrown downward from a tower that's 300 feet above the ground, and it's got an initial velocity of 50 feet per second. And we know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 32 feet per second squared. We want to know when does the penny hit the ground. So, all right, a few things here. Um, so I like to write down my initial conditions at the at the beginning. So, you know, there's our little uh, our tower. Uh, we'll make it look like a tower here. So um, there's our tower, and we know that it's 300 feet above the ground. And what I'm going to start doing, so I'm going to use, you know, S of T for position, V of T for velocity, and A of T for acceleration. And we know a couple things. Um, so at time zero, that's right when the penny, you know, gets dropped off. So at T equals zero, well, we'll think about S of T as being the height above the ground. So that means the height, again, um, s at time t equals 0, we know that it's a height of 300 feet above the ground. So that's going to be one of my initial conditions that I can use. Um, v of t is just going to be the velocity. Well, the velocity at time 0, um, you know, that's the initial velocity. We know it's going 50 feet per second, but since we're throwing it downwards, we're going to give that a negative sign just to indicate the direction. And we know the acceleration, um, well, really, the acceleration at any time t, it's constant. So the acceleration at any time t is just going to be negative 32 feet per second squared. So let's see here if we can't, uh, can't get some information from this. So we know to get the velocity equation, we simply integrate the acceleration equation. And, well, that's going to be easy enough, so we just find the antiderivative of negative 32 dt. And that's just going to be negative 32t uh, plus c. We're going to put on our arbitrary constant there. And what we'll do now is we'll simply solve for c. Again, we've got this initial condition about velocity that we can use. So let's see. It says the velocity um, at time 0 we know that's negative 50. So I'm just going to plug in t equals 0 into my equation. So we'll just get negative 32 times 0 plus c. Or in this case, c is just going to be negative 50. Okay, so now we know our velocity equation, v of t. That's just going to be um, what we had before, so negative 32t. And then our constant plus c is going to be negative 50. Now we're going to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to find a, a, you know, a, a formula for s of t, the height above ground. So again, to get s of t, we can just calculate the antiderivative of our velocity, which is negative 32t minus 50 dt. So the antiderivative will get negative 32. Just use the power rule, so t squared over 2 minus 50 t, and again, um, plus a new constant, I'll, I'll call it d. And, okay, so we could simplify this. This is negative 16 t squared minus 50 t plus d. And we know our initial condition, again, uh, the height times 0 is 300. So if we plug that in, so s of zero, that's going to give us positive 300. And again, if I plug in zeros everywhere, I have a t. All I'll be left with on the right side is the d. So we get d to equal 300. So now we've got our equation. It says s of t, the height above ground after t seconds. We said it's negative 16 t squared minus 50 t. And then our value for d was 300. All right, and now uh, we want to know, you know, when does it hit the ground? 
So this is the question we're trying to answer here. Well, when it hits the ground, that means the height above the ground, s of t, that's when uh, the height above the ground equals zero, right? If it hits the ground, it's zero feet above the ground. So that tells us now we have to solve just a nice quadratic equation, negative 16t squared minus 50t plus 300. This all equals zero. And now, again, just a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of fun here. Um, I'm trying to think, let's see. Certainly we can, we could divide everything through by negative 16. Um, let's see, I'm just thinking about greatest common factors. Certainly 2 will go into everything. So what I'm going to eventually do is just use the quadratic formula. I'm just going to make the numbers a little bit smaller. Um, I think I'm even going to divide both sides by negative 2. So negative 16 over negative 2, that's positive 8t squared. Let's see, negative 50 over negative 2, that's positive 25t. And then positive 300 divided by negative 2, that's going to be negative 150 equals 0. So all right, um, again, you could play with factors if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so those are going to be our solutions here. All right, so let's plug them in. It says we'll get negative uh, 25 plus or minus the square root of, I guess, uh, 25 squared minus 4 times our a value, which is going to be positive 8, times our c value, which is going to be negative 150. Squeeze that in there. Over 2 times a, which again, our a value is going to be positive 8. All right, so now it's just fun arithmetic. Um, so that's going to give us negative 25 plus or minus the square root. 25 squared is 625. Uh, let's see, 4 times 8 times negative 150. Um, yuck. Okay, so 8 times uh, 100 is just 800. 8 times 50 is going to be 400. So that's 800 and 400, which would give us 1,200. We'll come back to the signs in a second. 1,200 times 4 would be 4,800. We've got a negative times a positive times a negative, which is going to make a positive. 2 times 8 is going to be 16. So let's see, we've got negative 25 plus or minus the square root. Let's see, 4,800 plus 625. I guess that's going to be 5,425 all over 16. And, all right, I'm going to plug 5425 into a calculator. The square root of that. Let's see, so 5425. Let's square root that. I'm getting this to be roughly equal 73.5. Six, five. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, all over 16, well, negative 25 minus uh, 73.65, that's going to be a negative value for t, so that doesn't make sense in this problem. So we'll do negative 25 plus 73.65 all over 16, and we'll see what that gives us here. So 73.65. Minus 25, and then let's divide that by 16. All right, I'm getting this to be roughly equal to 3.04 seconds, if all my arithmetic here is correct. So, again, um, you know, the last part, I think, is just pretty tedious to watch. Obviously, you're just watching me do the quadratic formula. Um, but, you know, again, I think uh, on these problems, they used to always kind of confuse me. And I think, you know, the biggest thing that helped me is just, again, just this very beginning stuff, sort of writing down the initial conditions. Because basically, every time you, you compute an antiderivative, you're just plugging in some type of an initial condition to help you figure out those arbitrary constants.